we're going over the basics of half guard, the fundamentals of you know your framing, your knee shield, the positioning, um, defending your head, right? the the keys that'll make you successful from here, and what'll get you beat. Right? So. First thing we'll go over is the knee shield. Right? We can play the knee shield a few different ways. My knee shield can be placed up near the shoulder. It can be placed in my partner's hip. What we don't want is we don't want it to be too far across. Right? So if I'm playing a low knee shield, I, I can play it. And usually I want to play it in the hip. If I place it too low, my partner can start sprawling on it. Right? And now I can't really use it. And there are lots of passes that he can do uh, from here. So. So if I do play it low, make sure it's in the hip, right? But ideally, we want to play with it up in the shoulder, right? Um, and it won't always be on the shoulder. So if I'm playing with a high knee shield, if my partner is really leaning maybe that way, right? If I keep it on the shoulder, you'll notice my knee starts to drift uh, really far up. And now he's flattening me out and he can start pummeling in front of my knee shield and things like that, right? So it won't always be on the shoulder if he really starts angling out that way, right? In that case, my knee will kind of drift more towards the center. I, I don't want him to be able to pommel in front of it. So if he is trying to pommel in front of it, right, again, I, I can adjust it a little bit um, for that. Right, but other than that, if he's you know relatively head over head or doing most of his passing, usually, again, it's going to be roughly around that shoulder. Right? So that's the knee shield. Next part of my whole stance here in, in half guard is going to be my cross shoulder post. Right? So you'll see a lot of different upper body um, configurations that people use. Some people just try to prevent their partner from getting an underhook. Some people post um, on both shoulders. I, those are all relatively ineffective compared to a cross shoulder post. I, so I don't need to create maximum distance here between my partner and me. I, I just need to prevent him um, from getting chest to chest, period. I, so I don't need to pull him all the way out here. I, I just This cross shoulder post is enough to keep the distance. And what this cross shoulder post also does is it controls both of his shoulders with a single arm. Right? Whereas if I'm going with two arms, again, I'm controlling both shoulders, but um, I'm using twice the amount of hands. Right? In addition, if I post with two uh, hands, my partner can come in with inside bicep ties and he can easily start clearing, flattening me out, and then uh, getting chest to chest anyway. Right? Whereas the cross shoulder post, as long as I stay on my side, he tries to use an inside bicep tie, he's not going to be able to clear it. Right? Now, that brings us to the next point, which is I, I need to be uh, on my side when I'm playing a half guard. Right? So if I'm ever flat, right, it's pretty easy for my partner to get past my knee right, because my knee is going to be pointing up. Um, it's very hard to point my knee sideways and uh, be on my back. Right? So... My hips uh, and my shoulders are facing to the side. Right? Now I can keep my knee from being uh, opened up, right? um, and my cross shoulder post will be effective from here. Right? So here he tries to use the inside bicep tie. Right? He can't clear it. If I'm flat like this, he can clear it. It's hard to keep it glued to my partner. Right? So um, this cross shoulder post, for people that aren't already using it, this single addition. Um, to your overall guard, not just half guard, will probably make you, you know, almost twice as hard to pass, right? As opposed to using all sorts of other frames. This is one of the most important frames that you'll see in in almost all the guards that we we use, right? So, right, I'm, my knee shield, my cross shoulder post, relatively close knee to elbow connection, right? So I'm not using a bunch of muscle here, right? I can bear his weight with just my bone structure, right? Um, I'm on my side. Right. And then uh, one of the last things here is is defending head control. All right. So my partner, hey, if you can come in and get collar ties or get uh, get cross faces, things like that, right, these will help him flatten me out right, and start putting pressure on me. So right, I want to, with my other hand, uh, be defending the cross face. Right? So if he goes to cross face me, right, I can use my own inside bicep tie here. Right? If he pommels inside, right, I can re-pommel. Right? He goes again inside like so i want to control this space so when he tries to reach for my head he can't do it right so um i can play with the inside bicep tie. i could also play with a thumb post right, in the elbow right so he tries to reach here this is a little bit harder for him to pommel inside um right but you know a lot of a lot of things that i'm that we're gonna do uh 
the more advanced attacks, attacking the far underhook and far arm drag, I will have to start, um, you know, letting my partner get closer for those things. So um, I don't play as much with the, the stump post, but you can uh, mess around with it. It is useful uh, at just preventing the head control. Right. Now, if my partner does get all the way to my head, right, from here, I won't just be able to strip his uh, collar tie off with an inside bicep tie. Right. So from this situation, I'm going to have to use what we call a backhand frame. Right. So my hand is to my own head. Right. And now I'm just going to walk my hand up and over my head and flare my elbow out to clear that arm. Right. And now that can turn into an inside bicep tie. Right. So again, if he doesn't already have my head, this inside bicep tie is great control. But if he gets to my head, right, I can't clear it with the inside bicep tie, so I use a backhand frame. Right, again, hand comes in, I wipe it off, and then now we can go back into preventing the head control. One other thing I want to avoid doing from here is coming up um, to an elbow. Right, if I don't have an underhook, right, because from here my partner can start body locking me because I've exposed the space between my elbow and my hip. I, if my partner body locks me from half guard, he should be passing me probably 95% of the time. So I try to avoid um, coming up onto an elbow if I don't have an underhook. I, if I do have an underhook, I, from here it's fine. I, my partner can't body lock me, so again, make sure to um, recognize that distinction. There are a lot of common issues you'll run into, um, reactions that your partner will give you. Uh, they can give you trouble from half guard. I, one of them is going to be uh, this arm weave, right? So if my partner comes in, he starts weaving his arm, using that to start um, sprawling or smashing my knee shield. I, this isn't the easiest thing to pass with um, from Nogi, from his position. However, it can be annoying for us to actually go in and, and finish attacks while this arm weave is in place. Right? However, hey, it's pretty easy to, uh, to deal with this. Right? So when, uh, when my partner is putting this arm weave in, I... I can use a cross shoulder post or even a collar tie, right? And I can start heisting up to my elbow right? and basically extracting and pulling my knee out and sitting up into a seated guard like so, right? And from here, and I can stay in a seated guard. I can start attacking uh, from a seated guard. Or once I, once I extract that knee, I, I can just sit back right? and, and put my knee shield back in place. Right? It's hard if I keep a disciplined knee shield up in the shoulder for my partner to arm weave me, right? So here it's hard for him to, to really beat that that uh, knee, right? But if I start getting a little bit, you know, too on my side, uh, and uh, or my knee starts coming too far across, right? Now again, this can be really annoying. So again, I can cross shoulder post or I can call it tie. I'm just gonna come up, start extracting my knee, right? Again, my knee shield is in place still uh, on him as I as I come up and I just extract that knee, right? And now again, if I want to play seated guard. I'll pommel that um, knee shield inside. I, again, now we're working. We can heist. Um, we can snap. Um, we have all of our attacks from there. Right, so in general, hey, there's another kind of uh, um, way that seated guard and half guard integrate. I, um, it's in general, it, my partner is putting a lot of pressure, doing most things here. Half guard's great. Right, but if he's uh, there's certain either whether he's giving certain reactions or whether he's kind of playing backwards and not really putting passing pressure into me, right? These are these are going to be situations, right, where I'm going to come in and play a more uh, aggressive um, seated guard. Right. Um, another problem my partner can give me, right, is pummeling uh, his own butterfly hook in. Now this can make it hard for me to enter my partner's legs and such. Right, so to deal with this, right, when my partner does put this butterfly hook in, right, he's sacrificing base to this side. Right, so I can start pommeling my own butterfly hook in, right, blocking his knee. Right, and now from here, I can use a collar tie to assist with a sumi geishi, um, threatening my partner's balance to that direction. And he'll either fall to a hip or he'll have to start taking that butterfly hook out. Right, either way, that's a win for you. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, please uh, leave them in the comments. It really helps the algorithm uh, so that we can continue to grow the channel. Uh, if there are any techniques you want to see, again, let us know in the comments. Uh, subscribe, like, and thanks for watching.